What's up, Men's Physique fans, and welcome back to another episode of Men's Physique Radio. In this video, we sit down with Aaron Banks and Drew Collin and fully break down the Wasatch Warrior show and give you guys a full analysis on why the placings were what they were. But also, we take a step back. We go back to the previous podcast, and we answer a lot of the questions that arose from those conversations. How can you set yourself up financially while competing in bodybuilding? But not only that, what is our best advice of turning pro? How do we think that the weight cap has affected the men's physique division and so much more? This video was special and I'm so excited to continue to bring these episodes to you guys. So sit back, relax and enjoy this video. You know what's but crazy, bro? I really, thought, I really thought Ryan was gonna retire after this past season. Me too. Cause he was really doing did. everything. He did New York, like the resume was all adding up. Um, yeah. You know, he went to Steve's gym. He's like signing the wall. Like he spent two this weeks out there. I'm kind of thinking like- This year would be his last year. I think this I year think would so be too. Yo, and that's the crazy thing. Think about it, bro. All the stuff that he's doing outside, he got he got a new family, he got businesses, right? Just started a new gym, got the yeah. board shorts. Like, bro, and that's the thing. Like, people don't understand, like, and, and he's adding to the family right now. He has newborns. Like, bro, mm -hmm. like, when I first started bodybuilding, my kids were, mm -hmm. my daughter was, what, two? And I just had my son as a newborn. Bro, that shit is hard, man. Like... People don't understand even being the dad and, and having that 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 partner that that's handling shit. Still, as that dad, man, you still gotta. There's certain things that you have to do as a man. Like it's just you. There's no way around it. And especially if you, Ryan's a good dad, and Ryan Ryan takes care of his kids. He's he, he's involved. So like when you're involved like that, bro, it's that shit is tough. And people don't understand the, bro, the, not the bodybuilding and, and, and being a father, like an active father, bro, is very hard at this level. Very hard. Full-time job on top of, you know, already having the full-time job of bodybuilding, prepping yourself, and not only yourself, but you got to prep children and you don't have just one, you got two and, you know, mm -hmm. and it's at that age to where, you know, they got their terrible twos and stuff. I mean, I've been around <laughs> kids in the family. I don't have any myself that I know of, but as far as just being around them, I couldn't imagine doing it, bro. Yeah. And then you got nice. guys on top of it with like full-time jobs. Like my buddy Ciroc, he lives out here in the city. He, he was an Olympian. He's like a four-time Olympian. Um, yeah, he's I with know, cuts. Got, um, he has, boy. he has three kids. Yep. He has three yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. He's got his own business. He's a fireman, but you see like, it's not that he's slacking off. He just has so many other things going on that you see how him taking a year off, he goes into a show that wasn't necessarily strong and he's eighth place. And that's a guy yeah. who's like a top 12 at the Olympia. So just to put it in retrospect, like there's a lot that could happen. Just adding to the pressure, adding to the stress, adding to the, you know, what's in your normal cycle as far as, you know, not eat, sleep, train. Like now it's eat, sleep, train, take care of my kids. Okay. I got to feed them. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to make sure I'm making paper so I can support them. You know, and if you got a girl in the picture too, that's another problem, you know, bro. I did bro, the show with crazy. him and I was talking to him backstage about all it's of crazy. it. You know, he said it was legitimately drinking from a fire hose. He think that that time off wasn't time off because he wanted to prioritize his physique. It was because he had life responsibilities that he exactly. needed to prioritize. So I can only imagine, man. Like, and not to mention, man, we were talking about Ryan Terry. Aaron, like, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, bro, the added responsibility of actually being an Olympia champion. You're talking about that added responsibility. You know, I, don't, I can't even imagine what that looks like. What, what kind of pressure is that? Man, well, that's a good thing crazy. to ask him if we ever get yeah. on here. You know, the thing is, man, the pressure is. That's what I'm saying, man. We talk about real life shit. That's the difference. It's, it's, yeah, it's. Absolutely. That shit is so tough, man. And to have to wake up at 4 a.m. to do faster cardio, to try to like be as quiet as you can before the kids wake up. But now, now it's basically my son wakes up when I wake up. So we're doing faster cardio, literally either right here on the Peloton or downstairs on a on a stairmaster, and he's just there talking my damn ear off. But um, previously, yeah. before you're that, a superhero, he, so you're up, bro, and he just wants to be just like you. <laughs> literally, so he, you know, he's That's watching. That's what it is. Dad, he's just looking. He's up. <laughs> but at the same time, when they were younger, man, it was that was the battle. That was the extreme battle, bro. Because the thing was, is you wake up. Then they wake up. You got to get them ready. You got to brush their teeth, get their clothes ready, iron their clothes. I got to comb my daughter's hair. Bro, not many men are combing daughter's hair. I'll tell you that right now. Get my son ready. Get his hair done. Uh, get them food. Get them breakfast. Whatever they need. Get, I have to 
pack their freaking lunch. I may I have to make my daughter a freaking peanut butter sandwich every dang day. It's ridiculous. I don't know why she just <laughs> likes peanut butter sandwiches, but damn it, she just likes peanut butter sandwiches. But you got to pack that. Then next thing you know, I still have to get in the shower from from freaking fasted cardio, eat my first meal, get myself ready. We out the door by at least 7.45 to get them to school. I come back, get here, prep my second meal, and bro, I'm there's I'm I feel like I did a whole ass day already. Like literally from th- those hours from me waking up from fasted cardio to taking them to school, bro, I'm I'm damn near tapped. So I go train, get and all you my still energy won out. the Olympia. <laughs> literally, literally, still. literally, man. And, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a daily title. that's a daily Why? battle right there. It's a daily battle, man. And and the yeah, thing man. is, it's and that's what teaches you a lot. It teaches you a lot though. It do. It do, man. It, it taught me so much from from the patience to 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 understanding why I'm really doing this and just just to see their faces like even at when I do shows that like they don't give a damn what place I place. Hey, daddy, you still won. You know what I mean? So it, it's that yeah. is what I take from competing is is these damn trophies. I hate these damn trophies. I don't give two shits about these trophies. But when my kids come up here, bro, they're like, Dad, is that my trophy? Yeah, that's your trophy. Because it, it, it's I've, I've done it for them. I'm not doing this shit for me. I didn't yeah. get off my get off my ass to come be a bodybuilder just because. I didn't. I never wanted to do this. When I found out I was having a daughter, I decided, okay, I'm not gonna be that dad that fucking tells my daughter to go outside and play by herself. No, dad's gonna come out there and play with you. So I do this for my kids. I oh, do yeah. everything that I do. I talk my shit. I be who I am for my kids. Man, it ain't just be, it ain't for me at all, <laughs> like at all. So. That's just a different, different spin and a different look at why I do what I do. So that's just a little. And it bit. works, bro. It works. Yeah, bro. I mean, again, it's kind of funny, man, because I think you know, social media and kind of the world from the outside looking in, they don't see the full the full perspective, right? They don't see nope. what you do on a day to day to, you know, to get to where you're getting to. And Thanks. again, man, you know, I have an opportunity to you know know you personally. And just you see some of the things behind the scenes, man. It's, I think that's why this podcast is so dope, man. You know, just the, the response off of in the last one was really cool because they got an opportunity to actually peel back the layers and see who you are and, you know, not just the perspective that's necessarily painted, you know. So, again, man, right. it, it, it's dope. And the direction that men's physique is going because of things like this, I think it's really cool. So, Absolutely. again, you know, so far – like I said, 2024 is off to one hell of a start. We had the Wasatch Warrior this past weekend. We have a new 2024 qualified Olympian, right? He's a multi-time Olympian at this point, right? We had another close battle, Dustin Alves coming in second. So I just wanted to run through the top five, give them their flowers. And I want to kind of peel back the layers and see kind of what everybody thought of the placings. And um, let's kind of go from there. Cool. Yep, let's run it. Let's run it. Let's All right, run let's it. do it. All right, All right, so I'm so, I'm gonna take it from the top real quick, just with right. uh, always the winner. Always give the the winners flowers. Kind of comp, comp, uh, contemplated going from like sixth all the way back to first, but I kind of want to move my way back because there's a few honorable mentions I want to go over. A lot of pro debuts as well, but with Jason winning, I had it. You know, he's the guy though, the beat. You know, I don't think it was his best, but it was definitely the enough to win. Right? Um, yeah. You look at the fullness from the front. You look at his back, he definitely improved his back a lot. Um, the things that he has as strengths is what Dustin lacks. So Dustin lacks the chest. Dustin lacks a lot of that roundness from the front. Now it's closer in the back, and that's why I think Dustin picked up a lot of ground from some of the other guys that were closer. So you had Dustin in second, who definitely improved a lot from Charlotte, um, definitely sharper. It seemed like Gilko, shout out Gilko, who had an amazing live stream, uh, with how clear the pictures were, I almost felt like I was there watching the uh, watching the um, the video on the stream. But I mean, it really clear, so it got me, you know, a little deeper, closer look at some of these guys of how they're looking. Because you can't always go off the monitor, but when it's crystal clear, it does say a lot. So Dustin in second definitely improved from Charlotte. He's only getting better. He's still fresh, you know, newer rookie on the on the scene right now with two second places. Um, 
So it would have been interesting to see him at Tri City, to be honest with you. Yes. You know, that's yes. another thing that people forget with the new contracts. Um, you have to, the deadline is Monday at three. So it would have been interesting to see how he would have done um, going against another teammate, Travis Yao. Shout out to Ben Quill. I mean, he trains both these guys, both, you know, great rookies. Um, you had Andre Benson in third, who is another older guy who is an Olympian, former Olympian, still has great fullness great shape muscle maturity is what really separates them from some of these other guys. And the same thing with JC in fourth. Um, he's another guy that has the fullness, has the muscle maturity, but I think that it came down to posing who got harder as they posed. I think he was fading a little bit. Um, that's why I kind of switched them around. Um, fifth place was, uh, I'm going off of his Instagram name, but it's skinny macho on Instagram. I forgot exactly what his name <laughs> yeah. is, but yeah, the yellow macho. Yeah, Dallas. He, Dallas. Um, shout out Dallas. He looked good. He was a guy that I didn't know going into the show on the list, but I was doing my research so I could give a better review on the show. So before even seeing him on stage, I kind of knew he was a guy that's going to come in with fullness. I think that he has a lot of fresh muscle. He's only going to get harder with time as well. The shape is there. And if you notice in this show, out of any show so far this year, excluding the Arnolds, um, a lot of these guys were a lot closer in shape and fullness. Yes. Um, you know, some of these other shows, whether it was a deadline reason or not, this show, I think, so far was the most competitive show that we've seen, excluding, obviously, the Arnolds. Um, in sixth place, we had Ken's, um, another guy with great shape. He's really round bubbly. He just needs to get more conditioned. He has a softer look, but his shape is is great. I think he's so full that it actually makes him look more narrow. He's another guy that I could, I think could afford to cut down maybe five to seven pounds, come in tighter. I mean, amazing shape. I mean, this guy has probably the best shape that I've seen on stage. Um, definitely be dangerous. He could definitely be an Olympia caliber athlete, but he needs to make sure that he is like crisp and hard, dry. His posing's really good. Um, I want to give a shout out to Miles Man, also on the team of cuts. And I want to give a shout out to Austin Woody. Both of these guys brought their best, made tons of improvements from last year. Definitely peeled. The only critique that I have with Miles is that he's newer. He needs to show his face more. And he also just needs more muscle maturity. I told him this too. He has a lot of fresh muscle. He's newer to it. He added a lot of muscle in the last year, but he needs to kind of solidify that muscle because the difference with all these other guys, like especially the top four, they have that muscle maturity and they have that fullness. Um, he just needs to keep pushing uh, the muscle maturity, which is just a time thing. You really can't push it, but with time, he's going to only get better if he, you know, has remains having the mindset that he has now. Um, and then Austin Woody, another guy with a great, great uh, shape, great look. The only thing about him is his waist is bigger. So in his front pose, when he angles, he looks great. He looks amazing. Could still use more lats from the front and especially from the back too, because he's such a tall guy. And in person, he's a really big dude. He just needs more, um, more lats. Then I think that it will crack him in that top five consistently, you know, not just at weaker shows, but I think that, okay. Strong shows. He He's a guy who could be anywhere in the top five. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, these guys are all in shape. I think Austin, to be completely honest with you, is one of the most conditioned guys in the show from what I saw. I mean, his back, um, you know, his just peeled Christmas tree, um, stratus everywhere, like everything just was popping. Um, it's just it's just focusing on adding that tissue in the right areas, maintaining it. And then just kind of helping that shape expand and even be better than what it already is, which he has great shape. He's just a taller guy. He needs to fill out in the right areas and learn to hit his angles. Because I noticed when he was like on the side angling towards the judges in that call out when he was moved from center, like him and Miles kept switching off. But you know how you angle towards the judges when you're on the side? And a lot of people that are watching this, like on a live stream, it looks like they're angled all weird, like they're not posing straight. That's because you always want to angle towards the head judge. You want to show them everything. If you're on the side, sometimes they won't see you straight on. So that's why a lot of these people do it. But on the live stream, when Austin was angling that way, it looked it looked amazing. His taper showed more. But the thing is, from the back, you can't hide that. You can't make your waist look smaller from the back because that's just where your waist is. So um, with those guys, I mean, definitely impressive. I think I was pretty confident with – the top five being where it is uh, going into the show. I pretty much called Jason one, uh, Dustin two and JC three. And I had um, Dre Benson in four, but uh, JC flipped out just because I think he, um, he wasn't, he wasn't um, maintaining his hardness as he was posing. So I think Andre Benson snuck up on him just from having that physical condition 
just being on stage and posing and getting tighter as he posed. Absolutely. And I'll say this, when it comes to the Coleman, um, I thought he had the third place spin uh, spot until they held him. And he started shaking a lot. Like mm -hmm. this is, from my understanding, he's been off the stage now for a little bit. And I think this is just one of those things with stage experience or at least kind of stage conditioning, right? You always get better as the time goes and, and yep. as you progress. And he's a, he's a veteran, man. And I'm sure, you know, if he jumps into one of the next shows, St. Louis or L.A., he's going to be, you know, that, that's going to be corrected. Again, it, it's more of a fading thing with him. You can see him start to shake. His muscles started to, you know, dance around practically. But when it comes to, to Benson, it's almost like you said, like, he, he got better, man. Like that, that's just yep. the muscle maturity aspect. Yeah. that really came to life man and i'll be honest he was the shock of the show for me you know like like you said i'm a massive fan of jason i love him um but i've seen him better at vancouver last year and then dustin it was phenomenal and i think that at the right show he will qualify but there are Absolutely. some glaring you know weaknesses that are holding him back from being you know that that top contender you know at, at the bigger shows or or more uh let's just say more competitive shows, you know, but Andre Benson, I was not expect, expecting this whatsoever. Yep. You know, I, I stepped on stage last year with him at uh, San Diego and same thing, uh, Witty as well at San Diego and got a chance to talk to them and meet them. That's where I realized Witty was in the first call out with me yep. and it was practically based off of conditioning and yep. simply hardness, right? So And holding shows, his poses and not, and not fading. That's a big thing that exactly. a lot of people don't understand how important posing is not just being physically conditioned but also being in condition enough to hold your poses on stage you start shaking you start sweating you start fading you're using all that extra glycogen in your body that's supposed to be filling out your muscles and it's not it's it's just kind of fading and then your body's fading and then you pretty much go flat on stage these guys did not do that you know so you yeah. could see how places kind of shifted around i mean the top three was pretty much top the top two was on lock in my opinion but three mm -hmm. four and five came down to posing and who got harder as they posed. Now, I will say this. This was an, a dope first call out simply due to the fact that all of these physiques were different, but also still unique in a way that fits, again, the Absolutely. structure or the standard of men's physique. Right. So Jeremy Coleman is definitely a bigger individual, right? He's probably yeah. the most dense guy on that stage yet and still had the good tight waist, um, you know, complete from front to back. Yeah, there was symmetry between, you know, the flow of each muscle group. Uh, same thing with Benson. I think personally he had one of the best flows on stage. You know, I think that uh, Dustin has phenomenal structure, um, but I think that structure also because of how wide he is kind of exaggerates some of the weaknesses that he still needs to focus on. Again, the chest, the, the front delts. Um, and Jason, again, kind of, you know, not known for his structure, but filled out, you know, max or filled out his body to the max, you know, which actually last season he had to streamline his physique mid season, yeah. drop eight pounds yep. to even be competitive. You know, he went from what, like fifth place and then yep. dropped eight pounds, went on to win two shows in the same year. Right. So again, all unique physiques, different physiques, right. but all still fitting the standard of men's physique. Absolutely. Well, I'll kick it off. Um, yeah. I did watch it. I was in Mexico partying on the beach. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, I was in Mexico, but I did tune into this. And um, first, I do want to give these guys a shout out because, again, um, I think that top six, after looking at the top six, and then they showed the back poses for the top six, all these guys had a pretty, some pretty had nice back. backs. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that's what I'm, lo I'm loving. Um, that men's physique guys are taking coming back from training. the back master himself. <laughs> hey, hey, they're, they're taking <laughs> it a lot serious, man. And, and I do want to, I, I really want to tip my hat to these guys for, for bringing, um, their backs to these shows. Um, especially the Wasatch warrior, which Robin does an amazing job with her show. Um, that was my second show that I did when I was a rookie. And before I even, before I even dive into this and kind of listening to this Dustin story, it's kind of reminding me of myself a little bit with, with him being a rookie and him placing second and second, you know what I mean? So um, that that's really high hopes for this kid. And, and, and hopefully he does get that qualification and we see him at the Mr. Olympia this year. But to start from the start from the sixth place, Ken's, Ken's is one of those guys who's just he he's he's a bubbly dude, just like just like Zach said. Um, 
again, he just needs just a little bit more conditioning. Uh, maybe do what uh, Jason did, like you said, lose lose some weight, bring the conditioning in, keep everything mm -hmm. solid, and then just just mainstream the the, the physique a little bit. Um, Dallas, um, I've never is, is he new? I've never seen this kid, um, but he he looked really I, good. I said the same thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know who he was. He he looked yeah, really he looked good. good. He had some legs on him too. Yeah, it's a massive leg. I'm like, these guys could some. Well, I think majority of this lineup, besides Dustin, could literally transition into into some classic trunks. So and do well but again. And do and, well and do well and do well because, like I said, they had the back. They and a lot of these guys have the package. And just looking at Dallas, man, he. He has what it. He has the shape. He has the shape. So again, it could be the posing. It can be a little bit more conditioning, because um, he's definitely full across the chest. Um, again, I think some of these guys' arms are just a little bit too big. Um, not not saying Jason's arms are big, but even like Andre. Coleman's arms, they're they're they could they could look big, but um, going down to Jeremy, he plays what he plays fourth, right? Fourth. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. yep. Again, him being a vet, that OG, he he's just he has a different look to his physique, and you can tell when he's on stage. Um, he definitely has it, and he he can definitely stand with those those top Olympians. Um, other than that, like I said, it, it you it can all tell he's a probably player. had it all probably had to just come down to who was the most conditioned at this show. And then just looking at looking at Dustin, um, I know he just needs to fill out his frame a little bit because, again, that was – I don't even know how tall he is, but that was one of the things that I got told my whole entire rookie year. Upper chest, upper chest, upper chest. I'm like, I'm tired of y'all telling me, damn, bring my damn upper chest up. So um, once he fills out his, his physique, it's, it's gold. It's gold. So um, Dustin, keep doing your thing. But then again, Jason – Jason was that first guy to ever, when I say ever, streamline his physique coming from a big, coming from an, uh, mm -hmm. not overweight, but a heavier weight. Um, I I did commentate the, what show was that? The Republic of Texas. Mile High? No, Republic oh, yeah. of Texas. That was when he, so, when he dropped the weight. Yeah, yeah. So me and, me and his coach, we were talking, um, back, I think it was not backstage, but it was like for prejudging or something like that. Um, and he was telling me that he had lost that weight. And then just to see him physically on stage with that streamlined look, he looked absolutely nuts. He looked absolutely nuts. And Jason yeah. is one of those guys who, yeah, it may not have been his best look, but Jason is always super crispy. Like he's a he, it's just his skin or whatever it is, but he's a crispy dude. And, and I had sent him a message, man. I said, congratulations, because again, it's just another, another dub on top. So, um, congratulations to Jason, man. Yeah, bro. You gotta realize he wasn't at his best and he's still out here winning pro shows, you know, like, yeah. if anything, this, this should give him confidence. And uh, now when you say not at his best, what I think is, is not at his conditioning best, but you also got to remember where he improved. He also he improved with his back like crazy. So he his may have not been at his improved. best as far as conditioning, but you got to also give him props for what he brought up, and that's his back. And I did talk to him. I FaceTimed him right after prejudging. Because this is – uh, um, you – you Like, look at his Olympia. I don't know if y'all can see this, but watch when he turns to the back. At, no, they will pop it up Olympia. on the He put on so much size in his back his lats. that even – even because – even if his conditioning wasn't where it typically is, the, right. the size through his back made it still stand out. Still improvements. You know? Still improvements. Absolutely. He's still improved. So, and he's improving so it's, it's cool at, a, at, a, at a smaller weight. You know, yeah, he He's also a guy that gets better with time as well. And I did tell yeah. him yeah. that, you know, when he does the front – I know last week – last week we talked about the front Superman pose, and we had Andre Ferguson – Ryan yeah. Terry and Diogo that could do it straight on without an angle. I'm going to add Jason to that. And I'm going to say this because the why I'm not I gonna add Jason angles to it, that, he shows his obliques. The reason why I'm not <laughs> going to add Jason to that, because straight on, he looks narrow. But when he does this double hand, he looks sick as fuck. <laughs> 
Like, so I actually, I actually angled, think the opposite. And he does that double. That shit looks sick. Yeah. I don't like him straight on personally. So I actually, but, I, I actually think the opposite. Because here I'll say I'll say this: when he angles, he shows his obliques even more. And like you said, he's such a crispy guy that he's shown his obliques. Dustin yeah. has really good razor sharp abs, but his obliques aren't as good as just Jason. So Jason is pretty much exposing Dustin, and that's what a show is: showing off what you have as a strength you're, you're opposed bad. to their weaknesses. Yeah. But Absolutely. when he is front, when he is front on, it does give him more of a more of a tapered look as far as shoulders to his waist because he has small hips. When he angles a little bit, he's showing those obliques, but he does look a little blockier than me. And I actually took two screenshots from the show that I compared. I know uh, Alex is probably going to go he back and add blocking because he's full of shit clips. up top. He's full. <laughs> we'll... But he so, doesn't so... look as blocky when he's straight on. In cert- like when he was next to Dustin for t- it's it's also who you're in, who you're next to who you're next so to being exactly next to Dustin exactly. that was where he, yeah, yeah yeah and Dustin so so stand- than him. so standing next to Dustin which shot do you think would be his best chance to win when you think on. it's it's front so you think straight on because yes. no matter to me no matter did, what he he's losing did either structure. one he could have did either one but what's <laughs> better what what looks better as far as Dustin is a wider guy. Jason is narrow, but he has a smaller waist. So the illusion is when he's straight on, he looks more tapered as far as his shoulders to his waist ratio. When he angles it, to me, it just doesn't but look I'm gonna like I'm going to tell you right now, tapered, he, but he Jason would never obese. lose. Jason would never lose to him because he because Dustin don't have that pop. Regardless, Jason could hit any, any front shot, double hands, angled, or front on. He still wouldn't lose to Dustin because Dustin is not that full through the chest, nor the shoulders. Yeah, yeah but, I agree. I agree. Like but I'm, said, I'm saying explosive. just as far as taper, what would show it off more? What would make Jason look more tapered compared to Dustin? Because I think the widest guy on stage was Jeremy. Yeah. I think Jeremy Coleman was the wide, widest guy on stage. Right. But also there's different things with different people. Like his weaknesses may not be somebody else's weakness, but next to Dustin being in second place, obviously they're more similar in the back. But as far as the front, yeah. I personally think that Jason exposes Dustin more when he was straight on. I think he wins both poses regardless, but I think he exposes him more when he is straight on. It's just that taper looks crazy. Put them side by side. Put them side by side when you go back and look, and I'll send you both the pictures that I got. And I did the same thing. I was looking at his obliques, like when he angles it. Yeah, okay. So so when they're standing, right? So Dustin's strengths – will be his structure compared to Jason's, right? That's not going to change whether you're you're head on or slightly angled. But no. when it comes to Jason's strength compared to Dustin's, it's the sharpness, especially through yeah. the the midsection and, of course, the general fullness. So yeah. he's not winning structure. So it doesn't make sense to try to battle him out with that structure aspect. I would make more sense to expose him for what he is not what he doesn't have rather than try to go head to head with something you're going to lose anyway. So yeah. I, when I'm looking at these shots, I love the double hand. And I don't recommend like that Superman shot for most people, like where it's a slight angle, two hands. Besides on the four we talked about. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but honestly, you said I, I think Daniel Ammons, I'll throw him in there. Daniel Ammons could pull it off. That's the five. Nobody else. Yeah. It's, yeah, can't. it's if you yeah. really think about it, it's usually the smaller guys. It's yeah. usually the smaller guys with the smaller limbs, like arms. So when taller guys do it, we have too much gap between our arms. Gaps. So it shows a lot of our weaknesses. Bro, hilarious. Yeah, I don't know if you can find no the how, video, but I mean I'm not I that tall, that, but I did that shit my first pro my first NPC show, double hands on the hips. <laughs> just straight on. Like, bro, what the f are you doing? Like, what? I remember you made, you made like, a throwback post. Bro, I'm like, damn, I sucked that. I sucked that bad. Like, damn, I was terrible. <laughs> posing was my worst attitude. You're like, I like, had the nerve to smile in this posing. <laughs> bro, I was confident as hell with that garbage right. ass shit. <laughs> before, before, before we get off uh, the Wapatch, I, I, I have to ask this. I, 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 I wasn't planning to, but I have to. And, Andre Benson, place third. Do you think that his hair is something that can be distracting <laughs> and potentially hold him back when it comes to being neck to neck with somebody. I, I, I don't think, it. I don't think it's, it's distracting because I mean, there's people on stage with like crazier haircuts. I think that at first it's like, 
Let me. Oh, wow. Can I just ask you that question first? Style, but let, I mean, me, let me ask you this. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Go. Hold on. Go back to the criteria. It. What does it say? It's true. It's what does true. the criteria say? Like, nice cut. Nice. That's like, distracting. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, you name one person who got a fucked up haircut, gauges, don't <laughs> look properly on stage. Bro, they don't win. Because, you, bro, you're representing a, a, a business at that. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with yeah. his haircut, but at the end of the day, like, if you are trying to be this top Olympian or even a Mr. Olympia or whatever the case may be, bro, you got to present yourself as that. I know I what's that haircut style is uh, from Texas, huh? I've seen it. <laughs> I don't know. I never seen it. I thought he forgot his sunglasses on the back of his head. <laughs> I, re- I literally is- said that when he came out because it was it was blurry at first and then it started focusing and I'm like, hey, more power to him. I think you have to have more balls than not to wear that on stage. But I mean, he still looked dope. It wasn't as distracting as I thought it would have been, but his physique still looked dope. So it overrode that that haircut. But right. I mean, I just hope he doesn't yeah, have it for the next one. Like you said, if you're going to be professional, I mean, I get it. I get it. Oh, man, it, it's one, in the criteria. I, I That's lie, it, it, that, it is what it is. It's in the criteria. And if you if you felt like you you got dogged because of your haircut, go back and look at the criteria. It, I, I mean, I wouldn't cut my hair. They tell like you that, what they want. I mean, they tell you the league tells you what they want. So many people go against what the the league wants, but at the end of the day, he there. If he didn't see no problem with it, ain't no problem with it. That that's the style he decided to step on stage with. That's the style he got his placing with. That is that that simple. So yeah, I ain't gonna. But I don't think that haircut is what put him third. I don't think like if he would have had a normal haircut, he would have won. I still think that one and two would have been. So I don't think it affected him. Like people would say, I know it goes against you know what the criteria says, like clean cut and all that. But I mean. Some people are just into that type of style. I mean, I, I'm not going to hate on it, but I'll tell you what. If I went to a job interview with that haircut, I'm probably going to expect not to get the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just me. Do you wear no. a beard on stage? No. Do you, Alex? No. Where? I do. Hold on, hold on. I Omar Omar got on my ass about this, though, because when I did the New York Pro, like it was like too long. He was like, bro, if you don't cut that down to at least a one, I don't want to see you step back on. Yeah. And yeah. never, ever again. You know, and, and I and I cut it. I cut it real low. I, I was mean, the same as that guy. Bro, I, Ariel just I've, said, he goes, I've, hey, always, man, I've always cut it off. Like it's usually just the chin yeah. and the mustache. That's it. That's it. And I, and I'm not I, clean shaved, but I'll go to a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I think I look weird, all fully shaved. I don't know. I think it's yeah. a confidence thing too. I want to look good, feel good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, absolutely yeah, but it's still absolutely. a look you know like like aaron said it's still it's like a job interview you want to be clean there's certain rules and ways that you got to portray yourself on stage and when you go on it's it's not just about the physique it's also about how you you know how you present your physique as well and your face is, is part of that physique absolutely right. all right again every, congratulations to everybody who competed at the Seriously. Wasatch warriors the rookies yeah they brought it they, up, they definitely you brought it really and like up. i said i'm i'm excited that these yep. guys brought their backs up to par for this watch yeah, that show. Yeah. Uh, That's what I noticed. I'm like, damn, I'm going to go hit back right after the show. I was so excited. I'm like, damn. Now that it goes to show that the standard with backs last year at Olympia, I mean, look at the backs in the show. I mean, it's yeah. only getting better. So these guys are realizing that. And in order to move up, you have to improve your back. You have to. Yeah. Aaron, Otherwise, you're not going to go anywhere. Do you, do you think at the Olympia they judge differently? Like, for example – do you think that a physique will get more rewarded at the Olympia compared to the qualifying shows? No. This one's um, to be no. honest, I think if you were at a show, like a, a top tier one show, like a Pittsburgh pro, like a New York pro, like an Arnold, you're, you're going to get judged pretty much the same as you're going to get judged at the Olympia. Any other show, you're not. You're, you're just not. Yeah. I don't. I, I. I've seen it, and I just. I. I. I don't think that you can go do the cow. What is it? The cow state show. Is that a? Is that a show? It's a pro yeah. show yeah. in San cow Diego. Place, yeah. You're not gonna get ju- like you go win this first place. You're not gonna be first call outs at the O. 
that is just is what it is. And like I kind of hit on it last last podcast. Um, if you're not in front of Steve, Tyler, Sandy, Fipro, Becky, Jack, Bill, then you're wasting your time. You don't Those are the people that you want to be in front of. Yep. Like seriously, like if you're not getting judged by them, feel sorry for your 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 thoughts and your goals that's, going into the Olympia. Yeah, that's how I structure my shows now. That's how I structure my yeah, shows. Yeah, with who I, judges I, I, the shows, yeah. Who judges, yeah. And at the end of the day, it's not like because I think this judge likes my physique. Like, it's, it's not that. It's I got to impress this judge because they're going to be the ones judging me on judgment day. Right. You know what I who mean? Who you're so, in front right. of and also how much you improve from the last time they seen you. I think Absolutely. it goes hand in I mean, hand. Like, so, it's the first thing Steve said. It. He was like, he, again, he judged me in Chicago, placed me eighth two weeks later, placed me third at Tampa. And he was like, this was a drastic change. You do this again. I'm sure I'll see you at the Olympia stage, right? So, like, again, he remembers, man. And, and Steve is very short to the point. He's very blunt yeah, very, in his delivery. Very. Like, he knows. Say, he knows. Start, he knows, man. So, like, he remembers, right? So, again, it, it's good building a relationship with these guys, even if you don't go up there and meet them personally, right? Like, they, you get recognition, and they see the improvements, right? So that that's the biggest thing. So for your young pros out there, you know, don't be scared to jump into these these shows and, and seize an opportunity. Uh, and we talked about it last oh. podcast. I did it with New York Pro. You know, it changed the trajectory for my career and allowed me to, you know, springboard, you know, myself and be in these conversations. And, again, first year at the Olympia, I actually placed. So it was, again, yep. some, some uh, momentum that was built. But um, I do want to I do want to add something though to that. Now, just because you're a pro, you want to go in front of these specific judges, like we said, because they know what they're looking for. They're going to give you the best feedback. Um, they're also going to see you throughout your career when you start moving up and going to the next levels. This doesn't only ap apply to the pros. If you're an amateur and you're wanting to do an amateur show, you also get judged by, let's say you do the amateur side of Chicago. You're in front of these same judges that are judging Olympians, top level Olympians, Olympia head judges. That's your best bet to do shows like that because they're also going to be the head judges at nationals that are ultimately going to see your progression and decide whether you're ready for the pro level or not. These are the people that you want to be around, that you want to, you know, have look at you, have critique you, give you the advice that you need in order to grow. So, you know, for anybody that's out there that is starting to compete, a fan of the sport that hasn't competed yet, debating whether they should or shouldn't. The best way to start is obviously with a good coach, but also planning your show strategically so you're in front of the right judges because you don't want to go in front of a judge that, let's say, isn't within what we're saying right now and doesn't have any, um, you know, could be a completely different critique than what the head judges at the Olympia are. So being in front of a head judge at the Olympia at, as an amateur would motivate me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And it's not, and, and I do want to clarify this too. Jump. We, well, let me clarify where I'm not talking bad about any judge. I'm I just, I'm just saying because, because I know how people Experience take level. shit, yep. take that shit far left. When we're talking about being a top guy and you want to be the, the next Mr. Olympia, yada, yada, yada. The, the judges that we named are the judges that you need to be in front of. Cause one, they're not going to sugarcoat shit. They're going to yeah. give it to you how it is. And again, you either going to work on it and improve or you're going to get a worse place in the next time they see you. So it, it, I'm not saying anything negative about any judge, but when it comes to being that, that top athlete, that top amateur, whatever the case may be, you need to be right in front of those judges' faces. Steve, Tyler, Sandy, Bill, Jack, Becky, um, Debbie. We got, um, we got New York Pro coming up, Pittsburgh right around the corner, yes. right? I think these are the kind of, catal kind of catalysts to kind of the kickoff to where the hitters tend to come out, right? Um, and we've already gotten some big names jumping into Pittsburgh. I know Clarence just made an official announcement. Uh, we got Vitor Chavez. Um, I'm sure Cuts has tons of people jumping into the show, right? So this is going to be an opportunity for a lot of people to start solidifying, you know, who they are. And then yeah. hearing more and more names jumping into New York. With those shows being back-to-back, -back, it tends to be, you know, pretty stacked, the lineups. And then going into June, it's going to be, you know, a battle from there. Yeah. Um, for, it all starts. <laughs> uh, it all started. It all starts, right? You you stepped on Pittsburgh Pro Stage, right? Yeah, I, I did. Two, no. 2021. No, uh, 2021. That was with is, uh, is there anything and Ray. Different? Okay. Is there anything different about those shows, you know, compared to just the, the run of the mill? 
Oh yeah. It's just a level of shit, anxiousness, because you're 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 going up against the top people in the world. This these aren't just shows that you're just showing up and then you got hella rookie debuts and people who just compete to just compete. No, these are the top athletes from around the world. And we're not talking about just in America. These people come from Brazil. They come from overseas, the UK, like Ryan Terry came. I, I don't know even though if Diogo has, has done or any, well, Vitor Chavez is doing the, the Pittsburgh. So there, it, when you come to the, the, the Pittsburgh and the New York, you, you better be ready. And it's, it's, if you don't have that Olympia mindset going into these shows, <laughs> shit, you're not winning it. You're not winning it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Nah, but I, I'm excited, man. This is gonna be one one hell of a year. And uh, dude, the Pittsburgh Pro is always just that. It's that show that sets the year off to something special, you right? Know? It's, and it's, I'm excited just for the Pittsburgh Pro, just because of the, the the big guys. It, it, the big guys is gonna come bring a show. Yep. You got yep. a lot of people being you see added how everybody's looking right in their off season. You got you know Derek walking yeah. around looking yeah. like a damn gorilla. It, you know, it's just. It, it's yeah, crazy bro. to see some of these guys, guys man. Yeah, that crazy. shit don't look real in person, bro. We got Rami coming out uh, finally. You know he's been hiding away for a bit. Yeah. Um, it's it's it, 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 like you said, man. It's exciting time for bodybuilding. Exciting time of the year for bodybuilding. And uh, you know, I know Drew is jumping. Um, he he'll be stepping on stage soon, right? So yep. that's he's he's with, at least within two weeks after New York. So. We're finally going to have some good conversations about what you shows know, are you doing on stage. Uh, yeah, you, you keep asking us what shows we doing. What shows running, you doing? Bro, I, I've been speaking. I'm either running Miami or Toronto. I mean, they're a week apart, so I want to oh, get okay. in front of Tyler. So that'd be Miami. And, and then Becky. Same, same that. approach I had, same approach I had yeah. with Miami. Yeah. So nice. are you, are you looking, Drew, are you looking to do another show after Miami? Like right. Um, after? So, so the biggest goal, obviously, every year to get that Olympia qualification. Um, so the promise I made to myself is this year, do one show. I am ready early. So we're thinking about New York, Palmetto, or Optimum. Um, so it's going to be one of those. I'm not going to say yet, but once I know for sure, it'll be one of those shows. And if I were to win one of those shows, I'm still going to do Miami because it's already something that I planned on. After that, it's one of those things to where if I'm qualified, I'm not going to do another show. I think that I really need to utilize the time to get even better for Olympia. The only way I'm going to move forward is by taking the, uh, you know, criticism that I need. Because if I keep running shows, running shows, running shows, my body's going to get tired. You know, there's no reason. Like, I wanted to defend Chicago. You know, I still might do it depending on how the season goes. But, you know, it's, it's almost like building up the resume um, for shows that I would say aren't as prestigious as the Olympia. They're still all prestigious, but my goal is to be a top 10 at the Olympia and I'm not going to stop till I get that. So whatever benefits my physique the most and whatever Ariel wants to say, it will go off of that decision, but um, I'm definitely not going to run a gauntlet. I don't have to. Last year I did seven shows and that was because I was chasing that qualification. Definitely feel with the upgrades that I've made. Um, I sent you some, some pictures with my back. Like I'm definitely a lot more improved than last year. So the more complete my physique is, especially based on how I was not out of the top three last year, my back is more complete now. So I think that it would put me in a good spot and I'm definitely confident to do a show um, like Palmetto or Optimum and be a front runner um, and just come in. And, you know, if I got to shut it down, I shut it down and then just focus on the big show. So there will be times in my future that I will plan out bigger shows like Arnold, Pittsburgh, you know, New York, things like that. But for right now where I'm at, I still have things that I can improve on. So I'm not going to utilize that time to, you know, keep running shows and potentially lose one or be off or come in flat because after you win a show, it's almost like, you know, you're a little bit more confident. The pressure's off. So sometimes, you know, even if you don't want to, you you're, you start to slack a little bit. You're kind of like, okay, I'll just go into this, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm just going to gun for the shows for that qualification and just uh, shut down when I, when I have to, right? That's smart. What shows are coming you know, up? I, I know the appeal of seven in the, ones next, in the next week or two. You got St. Louis, St. Louis uh, this Louis, weekend. L.A. To be an interesting show. I don't even know who's doing it, but oh, well, I know Dustin. St. Louis and Dustin, LA. Dustin, George Brown. Yeah, yeah, they're the same week, same day. Um, Andre Benson is doing L.A. Okay. Um, so again, you know, 
like, not to speak down, I think there's been crazy shows, a lot of hype, you know, that's doesn't typically come around this time of the year. So it's really cool for men's physique. But I also think that, you know, after this weekend, it's going to be, you know, hitters at the top, people who've been at the Olympia stage, who, who has proven, right? There's still going to be opportunity to shock the world. There's no question about that. You know, but at the end of the day, I think you're going to see a lot of guys, you know, coming back to qualify and, and, uh, and, and this is why I tell people, bro, yeah. this is why I tell people, stop starting your season so damn late. It, it, it's not, it, bro, there's so many damn hitters out there that are really good that, again, we seen last year, a lot of good people did not make it to the Olympia. So the thing is, it's like, <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> so the thing is, it's like, stop, stop starting your dang season so late start start earlier because then next you know last minute oh I'm yeah but not show. too early not too early why not you gotta find the sweet spot you gotta find you got you gotta find the sweet spot bro there's nothing worse than being than being show ready in in uh april and then you know doing another show in in june or july like you're just you're, you're spreading yourself thin and uh like i think See, what I, drew's doing I, is I smart man he, he's straight up off the grid I never took that approach. No, but put it this way. Put it this way. With your resume, it's a little bit different. But when you got guys that are like top at the Olympia, like for example, E-Man, four in the world, he doesn't take a break at all. He stays on, goes all the way to the Arnold, and he moves back. So for his image, it kind of shifts. It's almost like, okay, he's he's chasing his tail now. And you, no matter who you are, if you're here and then you move down a little bit at a show that you're pretty much like you should have one if you're on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to check you real quick. You know, and then you start to lose that confidence. No matter who you are, you start losing that confidence. So there's a lot of guys that I think can't shouldn't start too early because you want to make as much like improvements as you can. But if you start too late, then you're kind of just like chasing yourself because if you don't get the first show or you don't get the second show. We talked about like having a good coach. You also got to have that good coach and that mentor and, and not that just that yes man that'll tell you to sit your ass down and you need to take an improvement. You know what I mean? Because it's too many coaches that's just, one, either chasing for the money and just trying to push these guys through shows and, and not really putting the health. The health is first. You see what I'm saying? And if, if that's if that's the case of you putting this, this guy through a show, he's just running and running and running and never coming off, bro, he ain't going to last too long. You're not going to last that long. Mm-hmm. So it all, it all boils back down to that coach that's just saying, or that needs to say, sit your ass down and improve. And some of these coaches just need to nut exactly. up and, and say, fuck the money and worry about this guy's health instead of just, C- come on, let's do it. Then. Let's do it. Let's do No, no, sit down. It's okay to, to take an off season. It's okay to take time off of running gear. You've been running gear for the last 10 years. Like some, some of these guys don't understand that. Yep. It's okay to, to chill out, bro. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'll be the first one to raise my hand. Give me an off season. This is, cause I wasn't even gonna take an off season. I was gonna try to keep going. Nope. Sit Ariel's like, nope, yeah. sit your ass down. It's time to time to refocus, reset. You know what I mean? So you 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 have to find you a somebody. It don't have to be the coach, but you need to find somebody who's not just gonna be that yes person and just say, Oh yeah, do that show. You might win it. Next thing you know, you lose. Guess what? Now oh, I'm gonna do this show yep. too. Yep. I lost that shit too. So again, you're gonna keep chasing to try to get a qualification when you know damn well you need to sit your ass down and improve in the first place. You see what I'm saying? I get so, I get if you're second or third, second and third, but not when yeah. you're like outside of a top five at a week show. That's, that's when you that's really need to focus about. on what Bro, it is I've you need to do to improve to achieve that. I've seen way too many people that be in second call right. out trying to Keep going. Stop. Run the gauntlet. Mm. Take, take the improvements yeah, yeah. And, and go. Real quick, we're, we're, we're coming to the tail end here, and I want to take some time and circle back on some of these questions. Um, the response, again, from last podcast was insane. I want to thank everybody, seriously, for the overwhelming positivity and making sure that you're helping, you know, doing your part in helping grow the division. Now, there's been a lot of questions that, you know, arose just from our, our simple conversations. And I thought that was really cool. You know, we got a lot of people asking, you know, our perspective on certain things, advice. So I wanted to try to add in a segment at the end of each of these podcasts where we can, you know, pull up a handful of questions and, 
you know, just try to give value, you know, not live on the questions for too long, but again, just try to give some direction. All right. So first question, how can you make a living off of bodybuilding? Is there any advice or tips uh, you can hand down? There's, Don't there's chase so the money. money, chase what you're good at. So much money is into it. You know what I mean? So, and let me say this first, everybody's not a, a, a top tier coach. Every, er, everybody who competes is not a coach. Um, so yes, there's money in coaching, but you also need to do your research, do take some courses, take some nutrition classes or whatever you got to do to, to kind of like solidify yourself. Um, but as far as being a personal trainer, um, talking, you, you have to learn how to talk to present yourself to these brands that so many people want to get, be a part of. Um, you can't just just send one message or one email and expect, oh, oh, I'm about to get signed. No, you have to, you have to be consistent and persistent on, on wanting to, to grab those sponsorships and stuff like that. But again, we're in a, we're in a trillion dollar industry to where <laughs> there's money to be made. And it doesn't necessarily mean bodybuilding, but the fitness industry is there's so much money to be made from coaching to bodybuilding yeah. to whatever. I, I'm, I'm very big on this, man. Um, if you want to be a full-time bodybuilder, you have to not just be a bodybuilder, right? You have to be an owner, right? You have to be an owner of your content. You have to be an owner of a, a company, a brand. You have to be an owner of your time, right? Like these are all things that are so important. That's going to set you up. Take it from somebody who has gotten talked down to simply because I like to create content, be in front of the camera, share my side of you know, my preps, all of these things. Right. You know, but in reality, that has opened up doors and opportunities for me to work with some of the biggest brands in the fitness industry. Right. That has opened up financial opportunity for me to then quit my full time job to then wake up every day and, and give back value to my clients as a coach. But all of that does not happen without building a, br a brand around who you are and yourself. And again, you don't have to be necessarily the most comfortable person in front of the camera. That's the reality of it. But there is still value in what's up here, right? And your ability to speak it and also inspire others based off that. So in the short answer, guys, be an owner of your time, be an owner of your content. And again, there's a lot that can be stemmed within bodybuilding. You can create brands, you can work with brands, you can be in front of a camera. Like there's a lot of money in the YouTube space. There's a lot of opportunity out there. So at the end of the day, man, that, that's the biggest thing. And I, I've, I've seen a lot of people be nervous to, to do just that. Um, but in the same breath, I promise you guys, getting uncomfortable is the best way to get comfortable. Right, my, so. my answer to that question, short and sweet to just make it quick is, you don't make money necessarily being a bodybuilder. Like you're not going to make crazy money being a bodybuilder. You make it from bodybuilding. You make yes. it from being a personality, being somebody that has something to offer through experiences. Um, I'm a coach. I'm a full-time coach. I've learned a lot from my previous coaches, the experience of also doing it and giving back and being on podcasts like this to where I enjoy doing it. I don't get paid to be on it, but indirectly, a lot of people might get recognition. I might get recognition from this. They'll hit me up and be like, wow, I like the way that this guy talks. He knows what he's talking about hits me up. Right. They want to do a prep. They want to do lifestyle, whatever it may be. That's where it stems from being a character and a personality, not just a physique in the sport. Absolutely. hundred percent. I'm sure you guys get this question a lot, but best advice for those trying to turn pro. Aaron, you want to start with this one? Uh, not really, but <laughs> the best advice I can probably give you, man, is, um, just believe in yourself. Um, um, no one else is going to believe in you. Um, if you want to, if you really want to become a pro, like I said, lock in the coach, lock in opposing coach, um, and, and really just hammer, hammer at your program and just really dig deep because you're going to go through a mental battle as your, your brain's going to tell you, you can't do it. And one day it's going to tell you, you got this, um, just put it all in, in into yourself and just believe into yourself, man. And that's, a, that's, that's the only advice I can give you because it's all about you. This is an individual sport. So if you don't believe in yourself, a coach can believe in you, but that's really not going to give you the 100% motivation to continue to do what you do every day. The best advice that I would give somebody that wants to go pro is to not chase the status of being a pro. Develop the pro mindset before you're ever a pro. There's a lot of things that you need to learn. There's a lot of levels to this. You have to be realistic and you could start by hiring a good coach. 
There's many good coaches out there, but you need to find the coach that works for you. You got to make sure that that coach isn't giving you cookie cut programs, isn't just chasing the money. Have conversations with them. Learn to ask questions and have them explain why you're doing something rather than just have them tell you what to do. And obviously, you're going to learn a lot of things over time. You might find that one coach doesn't fit you as well as another one. If you want to take your career to the next level, there's adjustments that you need to learn how to make. Um, you know, and also block out all the outside noises, block out toxic people, toxic Thanks. relationships, avoid, you know, bad habits. If you're drinking, going out, you know, just, just eliminate the negativity. Like with me, I'm somebody that speaks from experience. Um, I've had a lot of problems with females and relationships and things like that. And I'm not going to say it was all them. Like there's, there's a part of me that, you know, I'm an issue with, with what I can control. And obviously being a bodybuilder, you're very selfish, but there's a lot of things that take your mind off the goal. So if your goal is to go pro, you need to question yourself, how far am I willing to go? How, how much am I willing to sacrifice? How much am I willing to give up for this specific sport? Because at the end of the day, that's, what's going to really show you, you know, how bad you want it. The best advice to be a pro is to just do everything that you can. If you're doing other things that isn't helping you elevate, then it's clearly not something that you want that bad. Nail on the head, brother. At the end of the day, if you want to be a pro, you need to dress for the job that you want and not the job that you have. So that means you need to do the work as a professional before you even get the title. Absolutely. And it's as simple as that. All right. Um, do you find the new men's physique weight cap affects many of the athletes? Well, from somebody that is at the weight cap, I mean, it, it will affect my peak more than anything, but it's more water manipulation. I think that a lot of guys that are really, really big that are trying to get down, they're just going to come in flat. I think a lot of guys are more so chasing the weight if they're under it. Like, I need to get bigger. That's not the case. This is just something that they threw into effect to kind of contain the people that were just out outfitting the division. So the people that are really on that cap need to take in consideration their off season. It's not just about growing new tissue. It's about shaping the tissue that you already have. So there's a lot of guys that could come in a show year after year and be the same weight, but look completely different because they're actually changing their body composition, which I'm actually doing because people have asked me, how have you added so much tissue to your back while being at the same weight with the weight cap? Cause I was right at it last year. And that's because I switched my training around and I also just um, changed body composition a little bit. You know, it's when you have the right coach and you know that you have to uh, sacrifice th certain things, change some things out, you know, your, your body's going to adapt to that. So, I mean, from somebody that's right there, it can be done, but I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think me, me and Aaron are, are a little bit different of a position because yeah. we're not necessarily at our weight cap where, you know, we still have a little bit of room. You know, I, I weighed in at 216 last year. Granted, I was diuretic and flat as could be, but like I weighed at 216, my weight cap's 232. But I will say, speaking from what I've heard and people who are at that cap, the biggest thing that it will likely throw off are the final days leading into a show, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. right, how long can you um, or do you have to, you know, not fill up or how long do you have to hold back, you know, drinking uh, fluids, whatever it may be, right? The small details and that simply cortisol spike, just having yeah. to worry about those added variables can be something that throws off a physique, right? So it's it's definitely going to change some looks, but Ed Von Palmero is a prime example, right? Him and Cuts worked a complete magic show to get ready. And um, again, like you said, having, a, yeah, and having a coach that yeah. could, fine tune and, and do what you got to do to get there. I think, you know, it, it's certainly possible. I think I put it this way. I think the top guys are not going to be necessarily um, affected by this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really, there's a couple guys that they have the coaches. Down, they have, there's a couple. He will do uh, I don't, Ed Von dropped like 22 pounds, bro. I saw his weight <laughs> last year. It's I looked crazy. at that. That shit don't make any sense. Yeah. He, he was five, nine, bro. I'm six, two. He weighs five pounds heavier than me. I'm like, bro, this shit's that's, that's a problem. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah. All right. All right, all right. Last question. Last question. Thoughts on allowing men's physique athletes more freedom with their posing routine. You hear it all the time. Like I think Steve we, will say, front, back, get off the fucking stage. Yeah, I think we're in a good position. Um, do I think we need to be judged like in a side pose? Like not no, but like many of us do the transition. 
you know, that, that side yeah. oblique. I think that should give, like, that could be judged a little bit. But besides adding or doing anything else special in a freestyle of posing, no. They just want to see the front and back of men's physique. Again, it's it's the beginner bodybuilding um, division. So, again, they they – it's as simple as possible, front and back, and like you said, get off the stage. Yeah, I like the I mean, way that it is. The only thing that I think would be cool personally is if you could like choose your own song to come out to. That's it. Yeah, for like a dope. minute posing routine, that that would be cool to do. Like obviously, well, let me let me let me back it up on that. Uh, let me, some of us do get to choose our own music. By the way, <laughs> y'all Hollywood, y'all Hollywood, bro. <laughs> like, the hell? like, shit, I'm coming out to, um, to I probably got the CeeLo Green. I was the Cha Cha like, Slide. No cap. I was, I came out to the Cha Cha Slide in Alabama. Bro, see, see what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. I'm listening to this. I'm like, I didn't even want to, it was ridiculous. I'm like, come on. Yeah, bro, I had man. to turn on some 50 cent in my head while I'm walking out. Some of us, some of us, well, when, usually when I don't I pay attention rookie. to it, but. When I was a rookie, I didn't get no special treatment, but usually when I do the Arnold and the, the Olympia, I get to kind of choose yeah. what I what I step on stage to. So, sorry. That's for those dope. Two. That's, dope. Man, That's the only I'm, thing I would add in. That's the only thing I would add in. But as far as being in the division, we chose to be in this division. If we wanted to go pose, we should be in another division. I like right, the way yeah. that it is. Your free posing is still judged as far as overall presentation, but as far as what they're looking at, front and back pose, I mean – it, it seems so easy, like front and back pose, but it's actually more complex because there's two poses and think about how many poses people fuck up, mm -hmm. you know? So at the end of the day, I chose this division because I love it. I'm not going to change something that I like and the judges know what to look for. So, yep. I mean, it's why I couldn't, I'm here. I couldn't agree more. Simple answer. Keep, keep it, keep it the same. You know, at the end of the day, you can still have personality in your posing. You just don't want to be overly flamboyant to a point where the judges look at you and ask what the hell are you doing? If it's smooth, if it got some, some, some pop to it, that's fine. Right. But you know, I think, I think Aaron, I think, um, uh, Ben, right. I think you guys are some of the you know best poses in the league. You guys keep it simple, but also have your own personality in that. So it's yeah. a prime example of, of, uh, maximizing, maximizing your look on stage, you know, but Absolutely. outside of that guys, as always, we appreciate you, man. Again, these podcasts will continue to roll out. Right. So keep the conversations, uh, going below. If you guys have questions that you want answered, comment below. Every single Tuesday, right, uh, we are going to – or I'm sorry, every Monday we're going to be posting um, question box on my personal story. I'm sure the guys will be posting more stuff as well. And then, um, you know, shoot us questions that you want answered on, on the pod. But, again, as always, guys, we appreciate you. And until the next episode, peace. Absolutely.